show us the edge. Yes. The chip on the shoulders, the fight and the passion that comes from within. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. Trying to win on every level. Yeah. yeah. Expectations high. Got to show them you can fly. Oh, oh, oh. Play harder, better, smarter. Baby, put the leg on the hood. Thanks, Pelicans. You're now tuned into the Pelican Post Game Report. Much love to the fam. Appreciate y'all being in this episode of the Pelican Post Game Report. PPR final representing the Pelicans, man. They get the W tonight. Well, actually, I'm sorry. They get the loss tonight. Almost got the W, man. Pelicans fall short. 119-112 to the OKC Thunder, man. Listen, I wanted this one, man. I really wanted this one because I wanted the Pelicans to get the dub. But ultimately, what ended up happening is we go down to this team three games uh, to nothing in the regular season. Tough loss tonight by the Pels, man. But have to respect the effort, especially in the second half, as the Pelicans tried to get back in this game. They made some, had a collapse in the fourth quarter that ultimately slipped out of their hands, unfortunately uh, for us. But, man, let me tell you, man, what a hell of a game, man. You know, I was yelling, man, hey, come on, man. <laughs> I'm a little out of breath here, fam. But listen, man, I'm here. So shout out to the fam. Y'all hit the like button. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button as well. PPR in this thing representing, man, the Pell Nation, man. Listen, Pelicans don't get that uh, 45th win of the season. OKC is a tough team and you can't, you know, you just uh, you got to do what you got to do in these in these tough ass games, man, especially with a full like OKC. So anyway, let's let's see the press conference just came up. Yeah, it seemed to be a very important part of that game right down when you're trying to close the game out. Was that a big key for you uh, as far as that challenge? Yeah, that was that was one of uh several big keys for us, but um they they executed better than us the last two and a half minutes of the game. Um like you said, offensive rebound. Offensively, we we couldn't get anything going to the basket or get a quality look. Uh, miscommunication on us defensively. They get a couple open threes. Um, so, you know, give them credit. They they executed late game better than we did. Uh, but our guys battled, and um, they know that that sense of urgency has to be there from the start. And when it is for closer to forty eight minutes. Um, those are games that we we normally win, and we probably played about you know two and a half quarters of, of really good basketball. Yeah, the third quarter, you got on a twenty to two run, you one point eight straight stops. What were you doing defensively that were able to kind of pile up those stops and get you back in the ball? It was a combination of picking up our uh, physicality. Um, I felt like the first half we just let them get to their spots. We just let them run their offense. Um, they didn't necessarily feel our physicality in the first half. And in the second half, we picked it up and just continued to trust each other. So we're all extremely proud of the group in the, in the way that we fought back. That game could have went any, either way. 
And for us to climb back into it and give ourselves a chance to win the game, it's a credit to the guys in the locker room. Unfortunately, we didn't do enough to win it. And that's, um, you know, this is a great learning experience for us. We're going to play more teams like this coming up. What do you feel like you guys could have done better from an execution standpoint those last three minutes? Well, it started with our defense. Um, it's an offensive rebound. Um, so they, they get an offensive rebound an opportunity. Um, they get a couple – wide open threes where we don't continue to have multiple efforts. And then offensively, we, we got to come down and execute our plays and execute it with some force. And we just didn't do it. They they picked up their physicality the last couple of minutes, took us out of sets. They denied Z, didn't allow him to catch the ball. We have counters for that. But, you know, it's, it's one of those deals where our guys know when we execute um, on both ends, we'll more than likely have a chance to like come out of that, come out of those games with, uh, with a win, and when we don't, and other teams do it better than us, which is what happened in the last couple minutes, you know, it's tough to win those games. Then after halftime, we saw Larry and JRE hit the big spots. Just what went into the decision, you know, going with, with those two guys after halftime at center? We needed to be faster against this team. Um, they're basically playing all wings, and in order for us to get back into it, we felt like we wanted to be faster, more athletic on across the board, and and. Both Larry and uh, JRE provide that for us. When we saw Jose have to leave, exit out of the arena, is he okay? Do you have any update on him? I, I don't. I'm not sure yet. I don't have an update on on how he feels, but you know, hopefully he's okay. When you talk about the pace of the offense um, in, the, in that fourth quarter, those possessions that ended with uh, you know shot clock violations and things like that, what was slowing down the execution and the ball movement? Of those situations? Just holding the ball, holding the ball instead of just swinging it to the next guy. And that's the that's the key for us. If we hold the ball, they're good defense. It allows those guys to load up on us and get their hands on us. But when we play fast and we play point five, whether that's swing it, drive it, or shoot it, it's harder for them to get their defense set. And we, we started to hold the ball a bit more. And then just um, what it's been, you know, you come back home again, and it's just this season, last season, you had 28 home wins. This year it's going to be impossible to match that. What's just been the difficulty in coming home and closing out these games, especially in the clutch? Uh, I like where we are just overall, whether it's home or road. I think this team is 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 balanced. Um, you know, look, we, we, we like to win more home games, but right now we're focusing on the positive. And um, the positive for us is that we put ourselves in a position uh, with our wins um, to, to – set history and, and that's the focus and we got another couple games here that we really we want to take care of home court like you said is it's important for us um you mentioned offensive rebounds specifically for them but uh, for you guys uh unable to capitalize on that um how would you diagnose it was, was it something okc was doing to kind of keep you guys off, off the last minute I don't, I'm not necessarily sure it was something they were doing i'll, I'll go back and look but it, it's a mentality with us we we, we have to double down on going, even though we have the court more spaced with our perimeter guys and not having JV in the game, we still have to double down on trying to go and that's an area that we can continue to improve at. Okay, thank you. All right, that was Willie Green, man, breaking it down, man. Shout out to the fam. Y'all hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Please feel free. Share the show on your social media feed. Pelicans, man, fall short. You heard what Coach Willie said in the matchup. Of course, we lose the regular season series three to nothing against OKC. This is the first of six home games. Next matchup is the Milwaukee Bucks. We are in that terrible stretch of games, and a lot of stuff the Pels will have to show and prove, man. So we up in this thing. Got big Q. We got Lex. Um, man, listen. This was just one that started off not the way you would want, especially the second half, the second quarter, second half, the third quarter. Pels came out and fought them with themselves back into this thing. A lot of that continued into the fourth, and then ultimately toward the back end of the fourth, they couldn't close the deal. Um, and OKC just wouldn't give up, you know. And there were some interesting things going on, but in the end, you see. Um, Man, I just, I wanted to get the dub on this OKC team, man. So they get their fiftieth win. We'll fall to forty four and twenty eight. Uh, Lex, welcome in. How you doing tonight? I don't even know, Big Q. 
<laughs> well, listen, I'm, I'm a- <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, man. I, I know this one thing. There's a lot of stuff bubbling on the inside. <laughs> It was it was a, it was an interesting, <clears throat> and especially starting early on. I was uh, like, like the energy, but they turned it on in the second half. Just couldn't complete the deal. So listen, I'm gonna hit the stats, and then I'm gonna turn it over to you because I know you got a lot to <laughs> want to talk. About. Why you do? That? Why you want to do that, Vicky? <laughs> I'm gonna give you the hey, Lex. I'm gonna give you the runway and, <laughs> go ahead and do your thing. So let me uh, let me hit, let me hit these statistics. Uh, and, and listen, fam, like I said, man, it's, it was very interesting. The Pelicans shot 39 of 86 from the field, 45.3%. They were 14 of 38 from downtown for almost 37% tonight. They were 20 of 23 from the foul line for 87%. Shout out to the Pelicans on that. But they were out rebound, 45 to 37 in the matchup. 38 defensive rebounds by OKC versus 32 by Pelicans. The assist game was OKC as well, 28 to 26. Pels 7 to 5 on the steals. Blocks 3 to 2 OKC way. Pelicans 10 turnovers tonight versus 12 by OKC. And then, of course, you look at the fast break points 18 to 13 points in the paint. OKC won that 52 to 50 uh, in the matchup. And like I said, the Pelicans fought long, uh, very hard in this game. But like I said, you got to you gotta close these games. You got to beat these good teams and close out at the end. Largest lead, uh, 20 points at one point for KC. The Pelicans did get the lead for about five for a little bit. And, of course, as we transition into the individual statistics for tonight for the Pelicans, top man, of course, was Zion Williamson, 29 points and 39 minutes of action, 10 of 7 from the field. He was 9 of 10 from the foul line. Shout out to Zion on that. He had a double-double. 29 points, 10 assists, five boards, and three steals by Big Zion. Now, 23 by CJ was the second biggest scorer for the Pelicans in 41 minutes. He was 8 of 24 from the field, 4 of 11 from downtown, perfect from the charity stripe. 23 points, five assists, six boards. For him, 16 apiece by Herb and Trey Murphy. Trey had 39 minutes. He was 4 of 6 from downtown. He finished with 16 points, six rebounds, and two assists. Herb, 16 points, four assists, two rebounds in 31 minutes, <laughs> two of eight from downtown, six assists from the foul line. And of course, our bench didn't uplift us with the scoring that we would want to see, even though big minutes by Larry Nance played 33 minutes. That's more minutes than Herb that he played tonight. And of course, Herb was dealing with foul trouble, but 33 minutes by Larry, four attempts. He was two of four, four points, two rebounds for uh, Larry tonight. Najee in 23 minutes, he had seven points, four assists. Jose, 16 minutes, had eight points as well in the matchup. And of course, Valachunas. Jonas finished the matchup just 11 minutes, six points, six boards, and an assists uh, by Jonas as he watched the game. As Larry had 33 minutes, a lot of time logged up against Chet Holgram. <coughs> Monster didn't really have a monster game in terms of his usually his scoring and whatnot, but OKC did have three of their guys that were in twenty that scored over uh, twenty four points for them and helped their squad out. And Chet drew in sixteen with nine rebounds. And Shy finished with twenty four points, eight assists, and five rebounds. Twenty five from Giddy, twenty six from Williams. So in the end, the Pelicans fall short one twelve of uh, one nineteen to one twelve to OKC. And they'll have to wait again. They they are well, actually a two to one. I'm sorry, I said swept. It was a two to one thing. We did beat them uh, last year in November of, of last year. That is the first of November. We did get a four point win against them, and then the rest of the games, the, the blowout against the Thunder in January, and of course we just fall fell short by seven against this team. Uh, but uh, that win seems so long ago. But anyway, Lex, that's some of the statistics. Now you. Uh, the, the runway is yours. I'm not even sure where I should start. Um, <clears throat> y'all got to excuse me. I'm getting over something or trying to. Uh, the 
They need to fire all the officials in the NBA. They all doing a horrible job. I hate bringing this up because, like, I officiate things. But it had such a strong imprint on this game. Yeah. yeah. They The Thunder had so much help. And even, like, that 20-point lead, that 20-point lead, the Pelicans got that back on we, – we got that back on our own with no help. So you all can understand – so you can understand, if this was an even playing field, we would have been up double digits on this team. We would have beat them by double digits, hands down. But I think one one thing that I want to focus on, because, I mean, I know we we all know about the, the officiating. It was god-awful. And I would say yeah, I want to pray usual. for them. As, um, as usual. Yeah. I, I would say, you know, pray for him, but you know, I think guys just gonna have to leave this one out. The <laughs> they some devils, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I really, I like, if I was a player, I think I would have took that ball and I would have threw it so hard at one at all three of them, all, all, all their heads, because that's how upset I was. <laughs> That's how I have upset how upset I was. This, this is a, this is a shame. It's a shame. It is a shame. And you talk about having to keep your composure when everything is so lopsided. I mean, like it's like you know this is perfection. I have never seen such perfect defense going over the back. Oh, you didn't foul. It was perfect defense. Oh, that was a carry a convincing carry in the clutch that led to a three over oh, that, you know, no, that wasn't a carry. That was a perfect, that was perfect ball handling skills. He kept his hand right over the ball. I'm just, um, and it's wide open. It's like, you know, I, let, let me, let me ask this to everybody. Was this a home game? Was this the home game? Were, were, were the, were the Pelicans in the SKC center or were they in, uh, were they in at the Thunders building? They was in the school the King Center. Are you sure? I, I, I I'm, I'm they positive. They painted it different or something. Maybe it looked like it looked like it was at SKC, but it really wasn't. It was at the Thunder, wasn't it? Did y'all see that? No, you it, know what? It was the was, home game for the Thunder, right? They would say that uh, naysayers would say, oh, you know, they were Photoshop, but they gave you twenty three. <laughs> Attempts from the foul line versus uh, what were they? They gave uh, OKC uh, 14. So the Pelicans went to the foul line 23 times. OKC did 14. So, you know, even, even though we know uh, if you watch the game, you can understand exactly what the hell happened in terms of the referees. Yeah. And some of those calls, you can see when the referee made the call, they challenged it. Pelicans lost the call. If you remember looking in the face of the official, he knew it was some bull. But it take a yeah. certain certain type of people. Oh, Billy. Right. You remember his face Billy. when he said it? When he, lo he looked at his face? I was like, man, this. But it a lot of times, and it's just me, and I've seen a lot of stuff I've read a lot. It's just when you see how the game is officiated across the board, and these are, there are different officiating crews that are coming here. This is systemic. Whatever's going on, the NBA wants this to go on. It's, it's just horrible. The officiating is terrible. They, they don't call the simplest things. They're not consistent at all, even though you let them play. And if you're going to let them be physical, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It Zion gets beat up. He gets smacked on. He's always saying, where's the foul? At? Ah, it's just it's just it's just horrible game after game. I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead, Lex. Oh, no, you, you good. I mean, you know, because I'm trying to figure it out. I'm really trying to figure it out. And Big Sean, just to let you know, I, I officiate, man. Like, I've actually taken training and stuff. And I, across the league, like, it would be the same. It would be the same. It, it ain't like when we win, we still talk about the poor officiating. So it, it's not it's not just when we, we when the Pelicans lose. 
The thing is, there's something wrong when when a game is that lopsided. You know what I'm saying? They they give they give Wimby they give Wimby his calls. Wimby hasn't earned not one thing. He hasn't been to the playoffs or nothing. Neither has OKC. You get your credibility in the playoffs. So my question is, why is OKC being blessed with all these calls and you have no credentials that, that, that come out of the playoffs? They've never been. They've been to the play-in. You know, we have guys that have been to the playoffs. So yeah. you're giving the youngest team in the NBA a team that's never been to the playoffs. They whole squad has never been to the playoffs and they're getting these types of calls. Think about that. Right. Think about that. That's my that's my dog Sean. He um he's a he loves the Spurs. He Yeah, I know. And but I'm I'm pointing out and I'm being serious. I'm being very serious because mm-hmm. that that's a huge problem. Like like a lot of times you have to earn those calls. You don't get those calls in your rookie season and you don't get those calls if you've never been to the playoffs. You make your name and you get your credit in the playoffs. So when when you're seeing a team that has been, with the exceptions of Zion, he hasn't played in the playoffs. But, you know, in Zion's rookie year, he didn't get calls. When Wimby's already, he's already earned his key and he hasn't even done anything. So it's like, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta look at our perspective. It's, it's, it's just, you know, something is very interesting about that because again, it, it, it's been historic. You gotta earn, you gotta earn that stuff. And it, and if, uh, Hey, if you don't think, you know, I, cause I, I ain't making this stuff up. I mean, I really am not. Every everybody's done it from Tim to, to Ginobili. Look, where'd they make their mark? They made it in the playoffs. They hey, the you in the playoffs, you, you like you competing like that, yeah, you're gonna get those calls. You're gonna get those calls. But, I don't know. I don't know what um what Shy does, Lex, but to get those calls, but it's hard esque. He had a net, he had a horrible carry. He mm-hmm. had a horrible carry. Yeah. And it led to it led to a three. That should have been a turnover. It was wide open. It's like, why did you not? And then like for the Pels, there was a lot of delayed and hesitate hesitated calls. Like, why are you all making a call for the Pels late? But you're on top of the calls for, you know, OKC. I noticed that right off top. It's it's basically like you're thinking about, oh, should I give this call or should, should, should I make this call? That was a foul, but oh, oh, it, it, that's like it's like five seconds have gone past. Why are you thinking about making the call for the Pelicans, but you're on it? You're on it for OKC. And that that was consistent throughout the whole night. That mm-hmm. right there didn't even sit well. It was like, what are you thinking about? Mm-hmm. So you're thinking on one end, but you're not, you're delayed on your thinking on the other. Like you, you could, yeah. you could just, you could just see it like the, like they had to question the call or like go, it had to go through their, um, it had to go through their, the head as far as, okay, well, let me, let me see if they, like, I should even make this call. It shouldn't be like that. You're supposed to call the game. You're supposed to call the game. Not in today's NBA, Lex. Isn't that heartbreaking? Because it's 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 the and a lot of family members hitting on. I think my dog Slim in the chat said he said uh, sports betting. And, and listen, I, I man, it's just like Adam ain't Silk. Must be, ain't nobody betting on the pills. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, ain't the, nobody doing that. Well, see, the thing is, to a lot of the um, the NBA always looks for that darling. At one time, it was believed that Zion was going to be the darling that kind of took the NBA into the into the future. Uh, you know, it needs players that it can market. And now that it has, like uh, Sean's and Tasha's 
Spurs club, but Wimbiama has into international appeal. So the referees have the mandate to protect those players. So you have a certain group of players. They're going to get whistles. They're going to get calls. You know, you're going to know, you know, LeBron's going to get his calls. You know, uh, the Greek freak is going to get his calls. You know, certain characters, it, what, <coughs> you can name uh, 10 or 12 of them in the NBA that are going to get those type of calls. Zion is not one of those guys. He gets beat the hell up. Uh, he was beat up tonight. Uh, and um, in the end, uh, it just didn't bowl well for us. I mean, he had a double double tonight. He really he was out there doing some stuff. He was even out there playing some defense. But in the end, like I said, man, yeah, the officiating man is it's I'm almost numb to it now, Lex. I'm numb to it. I'm numb to it. Jay Black, uh Jay Black had a good question. Is there not a book with all the rules written down? No. Because I would love, look. Man, somebody should actually have the book there at the game. And and while one of the players, while look, look what it says right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I said that before, Lex. I said that you about. Know, I mean, it's like you know, and I mean, and what they would do, they would look. They again that that integrity word, that integrity. I'm like, okay, well. It was integrity that look. Let, let's go to the book. Let's go to the rule book on this stuff. If, if you if you want to stand on integrity, if the rules are written down, you know, let let let's read this stuff because apparently you forgot. You forgot. I mean, you know, it's. I don't know if it's forget. See, my angle is, and I see these games. I see a lot of these games, and I've seen so many of the Pelicans games, and I know that a lot of these games were officiated poorly. And these are different crews, so it's not individual crews that are poor crews. It's systemic because so many of the crews are officiating the same way, which is inconsistent. That's the NBA. The NBA wants that to happen. It's some kind of weird element that's going on with the league's officiating right now. Now that's yeah. under, that's Adam Silver because his predecessor, or the guy, you know, uh, uh, the guy that came before him rather, was a uh, was a man that didn't believe in all of this. He didn't want the NBA t- in any way, shape, or form connected to Las Vegas. He didn't want gambling around it because he knew he well, knew they, he they knew what in Vegas. You know they went. You know, that Silver did that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was they all were, about like, money. We're gonna we're gonna bank on we're gonna bet on Vegas, our Vegas team. Right, but yeah. that's that's but that's what the NFL do. The NBA is following suit. These are team. They're looking. These leagues are making more money than they ever made before by turning people who used to really didn't gamble into gamblers. They're making it so ridiculously easy that anybody can gamble now. You can bet on any and everything. So they basically turn about casual people. Right, because if you're not watching the game, because and I, and I know a lot of people, um, you know, just hearing them talk, you can tell who watches these games just by talking to them. Oh yeah, talk a lot of basketball with guys, and it's like, yeah, dude, you you <laughs> you you need to watch some more games for this team so you can understand what's going on, you know, because you know, and they're because they're betting. Uh, a lot of times they're going off of, oh, that's a big name right there. Oh, yeah, he going to score this much. Like, no, you 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 need to look at his averages and things. You know what I'm saying? You need to watch. You know, you need to see how the uh, the team is using him. You need to look at the matchup. Mm-hmm. You need to also look at the history. You know, there's a lot of things that go into, you know, betting. You know, mm-hmm. and if you're a serious better, a lot of the serious betters, they actually know, like, um, what what happened that day for the, for the player? How did they wake up this morning? What did they eat? You know, did they get into it with a family member or something? They actually had that stuff like down. It, it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know how they get all that information, but they they look at that stuff. If 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 they're you know, and I'm talking about the serious serious betters, right? They they really pay attention to detail to routines. What was his routine broken during the day? You know, uh, how did he respond to, to to you know when he hurt his leg or different things? Be like, no, nah, it, it, it's it, this is this ain't gonna be his game. Like they really have it down like that. Compared to when you look at you know casual betters who really don't you know just basic things like watching the games seeing the averages, seeing how uh, understanding the coach's philosophy, 
and how they use that player or, you know, if you're betting specifically on their individual stats. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff that just goes That's into it. Into it. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. That's the science behind it, man. There's several, um, um, I guess you can call the uh, betting masters that talked about philosophies like guys from the past that been around Vegas that teach you about the, the game and how it goes. But, uh, you know, but I, I like a lot of these officials is going on like and that's why you never see them get punished or like a kid. Like, there is and this is thing I always say once the money came in and uh, like Silva was attempting to keep Vegas out because he knew by allowing them to get into the NBA or for you, that stuff for you latching yourself to him, that removes the integrity of the game. Then people start seeing basketball in a different way. That's what Stern was on. He did not want that attachment. He did not want it because he seen Vegas is dirty. And corrupt. He did not want that stigma on his NBA, but he's but the guy that came behind him, that guy wants all the money in the world. He's a lawyer. And like I said, a lot of these guys are lawyers. A lot of these guys, and I don't think they can dribble balls, but they control guys that that do. And their policy is to bank out to make as much money as possible. And yeah. it's just destroying the product well, on the court. There, there's a lot of indirect competition, too. Good. You know, there's a there's a lot of leagues that are coming up. Obviously, you all know about the big three. There's a lot of things that are coming up. And um, obviously, the the NBA feels like it's a threat to what they have going on. It does. So I think to compensate in a lot of ways, you know, that that's what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously, you have to continue to grow. But um, I don't know. I think they're they're kind of looking at it the wrong way. But I don't know. I mean, in this country, it's, it just seems like it's a lot of um, – it's not not so much of uh, capitalism where it, it's it's forming it's companies being competitive mm -hmm. because that that's what that is. It's more so they're monopolizing. Right. If you think about it, look how look how much Disney owns. And this is just to give an example. It, yeah. A lot of things are monopolized. Like when you start looking at the the subsidiaries uh, of some of these companies and the umbrella in which they're under. Right. It's one, it's basically one company. Yep. So, I mean, and, and that's what, that's what a lot of stuff is happening where it's like, look, we want to control all the money. Yeah. The NBA is no difference. It, 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 it does the same thing internationally speaking. They have all these different foreign leagues, which they have their money tied into it. Uh, it basically took uh, your boys for the, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, who had the league, uh, who had the league, uh, what's, what, uh, what's his name, Lamar. Yeah, Lamar. He had his league that was competing with college. They basically took that idea. And they've been doing it. I mean, I remember when Isaiah Thomas bought the CBA, his ideas would buy the Continental Basketball Association and turn it into a farm league for the NBA. The NBA said, nah, we're not going to do that. So Isaiah Thomas, who was a commissioner and owner of his own league, they sent the Continental Basketball Association, then says immediately, he sold it. Um, Coach said it at halftime. Just like kind of just trust the process and what our game plan is, and don't panic. And we made a run and got right back in the game. Uh, we definitely could have managed the clock better um, and had some more movement. Uh, we were kind of stagnant, um, and I got definitely got to demand the ball more in those situations. During those last three and a half minutes, Steve, what, do you need your teammates to find you, or do you just need to go get the ball? Because I don't know if you even had a touch during the last three and a half. Uh, honestly, it depends on which team you're playing and how they're guarding me. Um, tonight, it was a little mixture of both. I got to go get it, and then – you just got to find me in my spots. Did they change something up on you? Because right before that, you were kind of getting your touches and you were rolling a little bit there. Um, no, nah, I just – our offense kind of became stagnant. It was more ball watching on the offensive side. Because um, when – even when Trey hit the three, it was a lot of ball movement that allowed him to get that open three. And we were just real stagnant. Was fatigue at all an issue at the start of the game or in the second quarter when they kind of got – Things going or was it just some, some discipline on the defense of them and then just the physicality tonight, um, particularly on the boards? They, you know, that 
usually you guys do a great job um, inside, but they reach in both points of the paints and on the board. Um, so what did they do there uh, to be successful? Uh, I'm sorry, what was the first part of that? Uh, just on the second quarter, what happened there? Was there any lingering fatigue from the, the road trip or just some missed assignments there defensively? Um, a little bit of, there was some missed uh, assignments, but I mean, they were hitting shots. Uh, they were hitting shots and we weren't at first. <laughs> um, carried into the third quarter a little bit, but then we, we, like I said, we trusted the process and started hitting shots. In terms of rebounding, the focus had a lot of success over the last night. Uh, where you guys are typically successful, uh, they had a couple of key offensive rebounds down the stretch. Too. What do you uh, attribute um, that to, and as well as like what you what used to happen to kind of like regain that activity? I mean, they crashed. Uh, it felt like all five guys just you know rushed the paint and were going for the rebounds, and for us. Uh, it's just staying disciplined, not losing sight of your man and boxing out. Is there, is there a little bit of, you know, like everyone's got to take some ownership that in games where JV might not get a lot of minutes, and sometimes even JV's getting a lot of rebounds, and it's easy to kind of take that for granted. But, you know, in, in games where he doesn't get a lot of minutes, everyone kind of take ownership. Um, I mean, whether JV's in the game or not, you still got to take ownership. But when JV's not in the game, uh, I mean, all season, we've always made the emphasis. We all got to come help rebound, especially when we're playing small ball. Somebody's going to box out the big, and everybody else got to help rebound. It's like we have a tough stretch of games like this, like one every other day. How tough is it to like, put this behind you and move out on the next one? I mean, this is the NBA. Uh, that's the beauty in it. Got to practice tomorrow, go watch film, see what we could have did better, and Try to redeem ourselves uh, Thursday. Real quick, um, just for you, you've not been in this position late this season. You, you know, the, the playing, the, the run last year, to the, it, you missed those things. But now here you get this important home stretch. You're in position to lead your team. How do you feel just to, in, the, in the opportunity to play in games that matter, that are this intense, and then to have this home stretch where you really get to you know, maybe separate yourselves? I mean, this is what being competitive is all about. I mean, I've, I've always said it, like, these games are fun to play. We didn't get the result we wanted tonight, but games like this, this is, when I watch playoff basketball, this is what games look like. Uh, just down to the wire, teams make runs, and, you know, whoever stays the most disciplined gets the win. So uh, I'm excited for this stretch. Um, like I said, uh, after Detroit's game, uh, it's got to take it game by game. All right, you guys have a great night. All right, that was Zion, man, talking about tonight's matchup. And he's absolutely right. This is a, definitely a playoff environment, a playoff-style environment. Lex, going back to you, I know you wanted to – I'm going to let you finish your thought on the Pelicans' loss tonight, 119 I mean, to 112 to the OKC Thunder, 2-1. to one. Uh, the series uh, season ends, you know, with the Pelicans and the Thunder. Very competitive game toward the back end of the game. We couldn't tie it in. But, you know, a positive in my mind is seeing Zion Williamson out there playing this late in the season, you know, and the Pelicans out there competing, getting some early, uh, I guess, that quality rep time, you know, and and and, and gelling. And ho I hope Jose is all right, too, because I've seen – um. Uh, who was that? Um, yeah, he was foul. Yeah, he was. He was knee. Looked like he was knee in the back or, or in the side. It was, in his, uh, it was in his hip. Is in his hip. Yeah, I think that was Kenrick. Kenrick Williams. Uh, I think he, if I'm not mistaken, I thought is it was Williams or Kenrick Williams. It's either one of those guys need Jose in his in his hip, and boy, he looked like he was in trouble. So. Oh, and then on the flip side, Dyson Daniels uh, was doing his thing as well. Out, uh, they rolling him out to the G League, getting him repped up. Uh, so hopefully we'll see him down the line. But anyway, thoughts on? Uh, let me complete your thoughts on tonight's game. Yeah, I mean, All right, Lex, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, um, aside from all, all the other stuff I was mentioning, yeah, to close the game, Zion went the last four minutes without even touching the ball. That cannot happen. And I know I, I've seen people saying that Zion was being passive. Actually, he wasn't. Uh, I know CJ, he went on some dri dribbling sprees. He he got caught up in his dribbling. And they went, they um, um, they rotated the ball like um on the uh, on the opposite side. It's like they were going the opposite direction of where Zion was going. Cause y'all know how he directs and everything, but stuff like that, that can't happen. That cannot happen. You gotta go to the dude on your team. You gotta go to Xanos. Like, it's funny because sometimes the team, I I guess when obviously CJ hit hit a few shots. I think um uh Trigger, he hit a he, he hit a shot. And then after that, it's like, it's like, okay, why hasn't why why hasn't he touched the ball? I mean, that that just that's just unacceptable. Um, and that kind of kills me because the thing is, is that Willie, I will say this. Um, that's one thing. Like when you see that, you immediately need to take a timeout. Like every time this team came back, it was be, like Zion's gravity was very, very important in the comeback. It was very important. I mean, he was, he was dishing the ball, like, and he was causing, you know, those open, the, uh, the open shots. And we started knocking them down. And that was both times in the first quarter. Zion had like eight points and six assists. He, he contributed um, he had something to do with 26 points of the 34 points scored in the first quarter. What does that tell you? That tells you, you need to put the ball in that man's hands because when the ball is in his hands, great things happen. Not just for him, but the whole team. That is so important. You got to know that. You got to know that. And yeah, you you right, black. They they do do that. We we've seen those long stretches where Zion just does not touch the ball, and it's like the the our team starts playing Zion keep away, or or keep away from from Zion, and I don't understand it because Zion is is helping. I mean, look at that. He had ten assists. Like think like you gotta understand there's a difference between the ball being in Trey Murphy's hands compared to Zion Williamson's hands. There's a huge difference. And it's the same thing with CJ. I think with CJ, and this is one thing for him to be a veteran, and I've said this with him all season. I, I didn't just start this. CJ did start to pick it up, you know, when we really needed it. But CJ, he has moments where he just gets so caught up in his dribbling. I'm like, dude, it is down to eight seconds on the shot clock. I'm going to need you to stop dribbling at some point and pass the ball. Like you, you, you're basically, you're not, you're not giving anyone else any time to operate in the clock because you used up all the shot clock. As a veteran, your decision making, that's important. That's something that I, I would expect for a rookie or someone, you know, who's really young, who doesn't know how to manage the shot clock. That's what I ex would expect from them. Not somebody like CJ. Dude, you've gone to the Western Conference Finals. You've played in meaningful games. You've been consistently, you went years consecutively playing in the playoffs. 
you should know that, hey, I can't dribble, 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 dribble. Are you keeping the time, Big Q? How how much? It's 24 seconds, shot clock, right? So keep, keep the time. Dribble, 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 dribble between the legs. Dribble, 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 dribble. I mean, that's how it is. That's awful. You know what I'm saying? Like literally, it's like, dude, what are you doing with the basketball? You have to do something with the basketball instead of just dribbling. So I mean, I just. That right there, that that can't happen, not from a, a veteran. And and really, that wasn't showing leadership. I just think he gets caught up sometimes. He made a few floaters, I'm like great job, CJ. Zion needs to touch the ball now. He needs to no no CJ no nobody else has touched the ball. CJ, the ball's not moving. Everyone is standing around watching you, CJ. Nobody has touched the ball. He shoots the shot. He did that like twice within the last four minutes, maybe even more than that. That can't happen. You're too, you're too uh, uh, much of a high caliber player to do something like that. You have to know, okay, look, I got two shots. I'm trying to get something. Ain't nothing happening. Look, what happened to the point five? Move the ball. The ball stops moving. And then, you know, uh, a timeout was called at 30 seconds, Big Q. 30 seconds. Yeah. And you know who they went to out of that timeout? Dribble. No. Who was it that they went to, Lex? I forgot. They went to Zion. I'm like, I'm bringing 30 seconds. Why? (laughs) Why did you do that? Four minutes ago. <laughs> Why did you do it at least three minutes ago? Um, Why did you wait till it got to 30 seconds left in the game to call a timeout? All right, we're gonna give it to Zion. <laughs> like what? You you know what Zion did say? He just mentioned that, Lex. He said that he has to he has to demand the ball more. And I had and I saw and when he said that I was like, Yes, you do, sir. You do. I mean, you <laughs> do, but the <laughs> team should know point. that as well. I know, it shouldn't but- just be him. It's it's. A, I feel like it's a collective thing because Zion does call for the ball, but when you're rotating the ball the opposite direction of Zion, I mean, it's like for real, people. Mm-hmm. Y'all got to make that dude, you know, bring his defender over to you just to get the ball. Yeah. You, and then you-, you have to think, is that a smart thing to do? Should Zion have to go across the court to go and get the ball, bring in his defender, you know, because you know you need spacing. Right. That that it should it shouldn't have you shouldn't have to do all that. The team should know to do that. It's like you know he y'all y'all know he's a willing passer. He he's gonna get the ball to you. He's gonna make the right decision. Zion doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. He really doesn't. Again, like nine times out of ten. If the ball is in his hands, he's going to make something. He's going to make the right play. Now, you may miss the shot, but that was the right play. You were open. You got an open shot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it, it's just understanding the situation. And and, and we've, we really needed this game, man. This was a close Uh-oh. game. This was a close game because the last close game that the Pelicans won, up to this date, is against the Spurs. Yeah. When Zion went up against three people yeah. for that last shot. Y'all understand that? Yeah. That's the last time that the Pelicans won a close game. So I do feel a certain kind of way because this was a close game that they should have won, that they could have won. Mm-hmm. I mean, even even when the calls were not going our way, we weren't getting any calls, no calls at all, for real. Um, you know, we still gave ourselves a chance. We took the lead. Right. Took the lead. Yeah. Up by four. 
And it's like, you know, we just, we go away from what's working. We can't do that. Because we already know the the, the refs are going to, uh, you know, shoot us in the foot. The opponent team that we're playing, they're, 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 they're going to shoot us in the foot as well. We, we can't, we can't shoot ourselves in the, that's three shots in the foot by three different parties. Pelicans can't be the third, can't be the third. Yeah, the Pelicans battle the referees, the team that they plan, and themselves at some times, man. And, yeah. and it, it happened the last stretch. It really happened the last stretch. Yes. Yeah, indeed. It, it's a it's a very weird dynamic when you see the if you see a guy as dominating uh, a dominant as Zion Williamson out there, the Pelicans should naturally know to get the ball to him. But you know, like I said, and he said. I think at times in those pivotal moments of the game where, you know, it's him, you know, it's it B.I. is not there. So, you know, that who's the first option and the most dominant player who is who the ball is going to go to. And he said that he has to do a better job of of demanding a ball in those times. And I agree with him because sometimes they, these guys must they'll ca- catch the Holy Ghost and get trapped in the game. And Lord knows, Willie. I don't, know what he's doing on the side. I don't know what the hell he's doing on the side, but, you know, at times Willie's yelling and telling them what to do in other ways. But, you know, guys on the court have to get it, too. And, so. and if they're not listening, that's why, you know, in those times, because calling a timeout with 30 seconds to go and the team is up five. What took you so long to make that timeout? <laughs> Were you saving it? Because the thing is, it's like. And and again, this this goes back to understanding the flow and just the vibe of the game. Yeah, it's like we're all watching the game. You have coaches that are watching the game. You have to know that hey, hey, coach Zion has not touched that ball in two minutes. All right, thank you. Time out. Time out. Bring it in, guys. Bring it in. Hey, man, he needs to touch the ball. Zion needs to touch the ball. This guy right here that I'm pointing to, he needs to touch the ball. He just needs to touch it. Okay? We we need to give this guy the ball so he can create the gravity that we need. If he has the shot, he'll he'll, he'll have it. Or uh, you all be in your spots. Let's get refocused. Let's get refocused and get disciplined. Understand the situation. This man right here needs to get the ball. This guy right here, he has number one on his jersey. Right there. You see the one? Right there. That's him. And I would have been stupid about it too. Like clarifying that. Cause I know understand guys are into the game, but hey, let's refocus. Let's refocus. Let's not lose what got us back into the game. What allowed us to get the lead. You see what I'm saying? Like this is all just the the this is logical things. It's not something, hey, I mean, how do we get back in the game? How do we get the lead? Because we put it in this guy's hands. But we're going away from that. It's clutch time. That's when you got to get your guys refocused. Yeah, guys are going to be in the, into the game. They, they may forget. They may, because they're in they're in the uh, their emotions and, and everything. They're in the flow of the game. That's why you have your job. That's why you have the power. When you see that, hey, your coach just told you, hey, Zion hasn't touched the ball. He really needs to touch the ball. Call that timeout. Call that timeout and get your squad refocused. That's why it timeouts are not just for drawing up plays. Uh, it, it's also to get your team refocused. Your team is rattled. That's You, you call timeouts to calm them down. That, that's why timeouts are useful. It's not just for the X's and O's. It's for, hey, guys, we need to calm down. Let's refocus. Let's get disciplined. Let's let's get back to what we were doing, what was working. Let's not go like let, let's not uh rescind in, in what got us to this point. That's what you do. That's what you do to team. That's useful. And and really like those those last four that those last four minutes, it's it's like you know, because we still had a chance, still had a chance, but 
you know, those last four minutes, you know, it kind of, it kind of sealed the deal just for that fact alone. Obviously there was a lot of, there was a, there was two key missed calls that led to two threes for OKC. Two yeah. bad missed calls. Real bad calls on the back, yeah. man. That, that that was ugly missed calls. But uh, let's get ready to bounce to the next one, Lex, because I know okay. uh, we talking okay. about. Sorry, I'm no, no, <laughs> you go ahead and let it on out. I gave you the runway, Lex, so you know. <laughs> but yeah, the next matchup we have is the Bucks. That's right, the Milwaukee Bucks family is who we got uh, coming up here next, and the Bucks is the second best team in the Eastern Conference. You know, you know who's their top player. You know who they have. You know, we have the Greek Freak and Dame and others, and the Pelicans. Man, will have to. They'll be tasked with taking this team. I remember the last time we played this team was late January, and they laid a hellified smackdown on the Pelicans, one forty-one to one seventeen. So this is one of these get back games that the Pelicans have them in their building late. It's going to be another excellent playoff style atmosphere. By a young Pelican squad who just fell short to OKC. And this is not going to be an easy game. I, I dare say this is probably this game is going to be even more competitive than the OKC game. The Bucks are coming into this game they, over the last 10 contests. Lex, they're six and four out of the last 10 and winners of two in a row. Okay. They're 46 and 25 overall. We know what time it is with this squad. And ultimately, this will be another tough test. We are in the throws of that tough stretch of games that we were looking at in January, in early February. Now we're in March and we are here now in that vaunted stretch where OKC starts it up and <laughs> we have to respond in kind. We got a lot of tough matchups inside this home stretch. So we can't, we, we got to keep the winning ways up. We got to get some wins on this home stretch. So how do we secure a W against Milwaukee Lex? Well, I do want to share this. Um, the Bucks did play tonight. They played against the Lakers, and they lost in double overtime. Um, so they are coming. They're, they're going to be coming in off of a loss, and we're coming into this next game with a loss. Um, we got to respond. We got to respond. Um. Defensively, uh, the Bucks have gotten better. I mean, I know they had their uh, up and downs and things like that, but they have gotten better, and the chemistry between Dame and Giannis has gotten better. Um, this will be this will be very interesting. Uh, one thing I I do want to say is. Definitely the energy's got to be there. The energy's definitely got to be there. We got to match or exceed, preferably exceed. Um, we got to set the tone early and attack early. Um, we, all, we all know that Giannis is on the attack mode. But I would love for us to put them on their heels. Um like first, I, I really do believe the first, the, the from the jump, the start, the start of this game is going to predict the rest of the game. We cannot come out lackadaisical. We need to have a short-term memory and we need to get after it, like be on the attack. I mean, like, like I said in, in the flash reports, choose violence, man. Like at this point, that has to be the focal point because teams are going to get more physical with us. Um, I would like to see, and I know this is on the coaching side, I would like to see JV um, more in this game. Um, I think having a, like having a two-man game between Zion and Jonas like they like they did with uh, the T Wolves, I think that would really help because the thing is is that you have a guy in Zion, he's a big guy. He has a lot of depth. You have a guy in Jonas, he has a lot of depth. 
the thing is, is that when you put those two guys and, and both, both players are skilled, when you put them in the middle, the thing is Jonas and, and Zion around that basket, it, it, they're both poison. You got, you got Jonas as a rebounder. Cause I, I, I already know how they're, they're going to play. They're going to have Lopez down there waiting. If, if Zion, if, if Zion, you know, goes down there, if he gets past his defender, so he'll be down there waiting for him. And then the, they do the, uh, the boxes and elbows as well. The whole team does. But the thing is, is that I think if they do that, that's really going to, first of all, it'll put pressure on both Giannis and Lopez. It's going to put immediate pressure on them. But the thing is, we we, we got to do it. We got to do it. It, it can either, it, it can even be um, Zion and, and Herb. Because, you know, Herb, he cuts very well to the basket. Like, those are the just the basic things as far as with those pick and rolls, man. Those are the things that we need to start doing more. We go away from that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't we don't go to it consistently. Um, and it would allow it would, it would it would actually allow the team to get easier shots. But I think if we if we do that, that'll help put pressure on them. Um, defensively, we got to be disciplined, be active, really um, um, active with the hands, get deflections. Um, you know, they picked up Pat Bev at, at the trade deadline. Um, the dude with the eyes, uh, his his name eluded me. Um, the dude with the eyes. He looked he looked crazy. Come on, for the Please buck. Huh? He comes off the bench. Ah, uh, Portis. Porter. Huh? Is that his name? Bobby. Bob Portis. Oh, Bobby, Bobby Portis. Portis. Yeah, him. <clears throat> yeah, he's been playing well. Like that dude. That dude looked like you know. He looked like you know. It looked like uh, Middleton. Middleton's game left his body and went into Portis because that dude. That dude. Like he's been a sniper out there, taking it inside, shooting uh, middies. Uh, shooting from behind the arc. That dude, he's going to be very key to their run. So we really have to watch out for him because if he gets hot and you have somebody like Dane putting up shots, you have something like, you know, Giannis doing his thing, you know, we got to take something away. We have to take something away. And then um, we can't play too hard on we uh, – too hard on uh, uh on weak side. Like the thing is, I think sometimes we need to trust the teammates more as far as on defense. Because the thing is, playing too much on weak side, once you commit, and again, the pass is faster than, than dribbling. The pass is always faster. They make that cross-court pass. You're talking about a guy having a wide open three. And you saw it. You saw it on tonight, on a couple occasions. Mm -hmm. We can't have that happen. We 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 either trust our teammates to fulfill their defensive assignments, or we don't. Shouldn't have to play hard on weak side like that. Really shouldn't. But um, yeah, we just as far as with with the officiating, we just gotta. We just gotta pray for calls going the Pell's way. I mean, really, that's all we got right now. Cause really, um, complaining to the front office or stuff like that, you know, getting texts, even though we don't get that a whole lot, you know, talking to the refs diplomatically, that doesn't really that don't really happen either. But yeah, we just we just gotta play hard, play smart. Move the ball, ball movement, player movement, and um, and try to get this win. Yeah, Lexa, to kind of build on your point about Bobby Porter's, he's averaging over forty six percent shooting a three pointer over the last ten games. So mm -hmm. Porter is definitely going to be a, a factor in uh, in the matchup against uh, the Pelicans, and we got to we got to lock in, man. Um, and of course, I want you, you know, before we get ready to 
leaving. I want the family members chime in the chat, fam. Let, tell us who you think will win the matchup to, uh, Thursday, uh, the Pelicans <laughs> and the Bucks, man, as we get ready to uh, get that going on Thursday. Can the Pelicans rebound against a very t- tough Bucks team? I just put the statistics online about what what uh, Giannis did, and it was ridiculous, man. The guy scored 21 points, what, 29 points, 21 rebounds, and 11 assists, and he still lost to the to the to the Lakers in double overtime. The guy is, uh, is just amazing, man. So they're going to come in here looking to dominate the Pelicans like they did in the first matchup, and perhaps the Pelicans, man, we, we, we give a, a serious effort here. Uh, Zion's got the big hit, bring his game, but so is uh, our bench. And everybody, the be there. everybody Every, is, especially uh, in the, of course, the coaching has to be as well. So this might and be one small ball thing, man. Because I mean, we we know Willie, man, because he's really in love with that small ball. That does concern me. Like, dude, you going up against Twin Towers? Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that. They're athletic. They know how to use their size. And I, I kind of feel like, you know, <sighs> sometimes you can't beat size with getting small. Sometimes you need you need you need the height. You can't teach seven foot, man. I, I, I continue to say that. I would actually like Willie Green to do something uncharacteristic. And um uh, Use Cody Zeller a little bit more. <laughs> but I know I know he won't do that. I know. And it's laughable, you know, <laughs> because the thing is, it's like, you know, it's about matchups. When you said that, DJ was like, yes, that's what yeah. I just said. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, you know, you know, these guys have skill sets. It's like, OK, you, you don't play a player because of, of this matchup. But at some point in time. Again, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta play chess instead of checkers. And then another thing, the Bucks won't even see that coming. You see what I'm saying? Like because they're scouting. Okay, who 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 plays? Who's in the rotation? Right. Mm-hmm. By bringing in someone. Okay, what? Wait, wait a minute. We didn't account for this guy. You see what I'm saying? Like. That that changes that that's a small detail that changes things. That's a wrinkle. It, it it is because it's not expected, and that comes from just getting creative. And I and I'm not saying like Cody Zeller. Oh, Cody, you saying Cody Zeller gonna beat him? Let's no, I'm not. I'm saying if you look at Cody Zeller's um, skill set, well, what does Cody Zeller do well? First of all, he's a smart basketball player. He plays solid defense. He actually moves pretty well. The man hustles. He hustles and he gets rebounds. He gets you more opportunities. Like he has a a feel for just, you know, doing like, you know, tipping it out to the right player. I mean, and stats won't tell you what he does. It's one of those things that you have to watch him. And I don't know if you all noticed the times that Cody has played. Does he make a lot of mistakes? No, I don't see too many mistakes by him. I see I see a lot of smart play, yeah. even though you know he struggles athletic athleticism wise. But he seems to get the places to defend shots. He cleans but up the board, makes passes. He does. He yeah, does. He's disciplined and he works hard. He uh, does. Those are those are things that you know you can't account for. See, a lot of people are all like, this dude, he likes this spot. It's Cody, Cody ain't out there, and he, he'll he get putbacks. He will. He'll catch the ball. You know, he'll, he'll get the ball and, and put it back in. He he does he does a lot. A lot of, he's, he's a sound, fundamental player. He's not going to do anything too creative. But the dude hustles. He works hard. And, you know, if you need him to get a bucket, you know, get, get a rebound, get a putback, he can do that. I mean, but you know, I know, I know Willie won't because he 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 don't he don't want to get that creative. Uh, uh, in this, wishful thinking, you know what well, I'm saying? Well, I do know, and I agree that he is that Cody Zeller is a is a hustler. He gets out there, but you know, like I said, I I don't think um, 
Cody Zell is the last man on the bench. I mean, yeah. we see Robinson mm-hmm. Earl. Get yeah, he'll night. play. He'll play Robinson Earl because lot. because of the the switch all mentality. You know, like Cody Zell yeah. contribute. And tonight, you know, you like you said, you'll see a, a the Buck squad, and they have a lot of length there that you'll bring. You want to match up with that, and I hope Willie, which more than likely Willie does at times, has has a one track mind with his switch all approach. And I just wish that the Pelicans man would have did something at the, the trade deadline to find somebody that can fit what we wanted to do, man. Because uh seeing Balachunas, and this is probably a game where we'll see Big V. Uh Jay Black says um he's asking about Jayhawk and will he see more than three minutes yeah. <laughs> three minutes. Well, yeah, he hey, could possibly be on if what happens with uh Jose Alvarado, Jay Black. If Jose Alvarado, I don't know what he got going on, but if it if it lingers past the uh, Thursday, you might see Jayhawk out there. I don't know. You might see. You might see. He might pick up some extra minutes there because Jose might not be able to go. So we'll see, man. But uh, oh I'll yeah, start. and that's another thing because and he's probably going to be out a few a few games because that looked like a uh, that looked like a contusion. Yeah, he couldn't even stand on it. He could. He tried. Yeah. To- and you know, Jose, Jose's a little dude, mm-hmm. you know, and he, he got hit by a big dude. Yeah. I won't say that because, really you know, getting need in your thigh, I, I don't, you know, that, that stuff is actually, again, it's a foul, but they, you know, I don't call that, you know, that's a selective fat, you know, column right there, but. They're not protecting these players, man. That's another thing. that, And that's right. a concern. And that's a not- serious concern too. Like when you like like again, we talked about that first game against Miami. That all that stuff transpired because they weren't calling the game. That's how you start fights. That's how somebody gets hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, and and players, especially players who are who are competing out there. You know, this is an emotional game. And if if you haven't played at the if you haven't been a player. At one point in time, like you get locked into the game, you're emotionally tied into that game. So the thing is, things are happening at 100 miles per hour out there. 100 miles per hour. Guys are going at it. They're competing at a high level. And the thing is, they're relying on the referee as the mediator to call the game. Right. You know, and and I mean, when you when you're not doing your job as a mediator of calling the game, guys can get hurt. You, you know, guys guys do things uncharacteristically. And the thing is, you you're not truly going to understand that unless you've been a player, unless you've been out. And it, it doesn't matter on what level. It can be high school, college, semi pro, pro. If if when you're locked into the game, you're 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 really depending on the refs. Hey man, look, you need to call because if you don't call, I'm gonna take matters into my own hands. I'm gonna do what I need to do to protect myself because you're basically saying, hey, I'm not gonna make this call. I'm gonna just you know let you be pissed off, and then you two can go at it. And then guess what? By that time, you done lost control. And then you're trying to find ways to get back control back, get things under wraps. And it's like, but that's what you were supposed to do before. You're supposed to be proactive, not reactive. If you're calling it as it comes, you're preventing that stuff from happening. You know, it, it's not it's not hard to, you, you know, to understand that. But that's the power that these refs have. You know, somebody can get hurt. Or, you know, fights break out, brawls break out. Somebody starts bleeding, you know. And, and let me tell you something. <laughs> Look, this this game is already like, you know, as far as emotionally, you know, you're already tied in heavily into the game. And to get, get an injury, you know, off of some silliness, it, it's a messed up situation. Y'all know we don't like we don't like injuries. We do not like injuries. We and we definitely don't want nobody being injured on 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 the Pelican squad. So this is true, especially late in the year like this as we're getting ready for the uh playoff game. And um 
Uh, it's getting ready for the playoffs. We need the we need the man up here, man. Keep and we need to stay healthy. And of course, we know Bi. We got an update from Bi with his situation. We know uh, Dyson Daniels is is uh, signed in the G League, and we know, he, you know he's making his way back. So, and Jose goes down. We don't know the extent of it. We'll probably figure it out. Have something uh, update he, on that. He, he probably ain't playing the next game. All right. So. Uh, it could be a good uh, chance, man, that we could possibly see uh, 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 Jayhawk in the next matchup. You know, we, we definitely could use the shooting. That's no doubt about it. We can damn sure use the shooting. Yeah, it, I know this one thing. We don't need we don't need uh, Trigger or um, uh, her. We do not need those dudes in foul trouble. <laughs> right. We don't need them in foul trouble, man. We really don't. Um, we we gotta, you know, just I don't know, man. Because we we for the most part we we play smart on defense. I mean, we're not just top ten in defense for no reason. But um, we just gotta find a way to get smart on defense. With you know, because you know they they call everything and we get fouled hard. You know, we don't get no call so. We just gotta just gotta figure it out and pray pray for the best. I don't know what the answer is because you know fines ain't doing it. Talking to them diplomatically and you know professionally or you know courteously, what it whatever you want to call it, that ain't working either. Then if you throw a ball, take try to take the head off, that don't work. I mean, we already know that don't work. So we just gotta figure it out. Yeah, that's part of the game. We got to figure it out, man. And uh, we got a lot. We got a few games left to go. Next up, the Bucks. This is a big one, man. Uh, the Celtics lurking. So we got we got to take care of business, man. We got to we got to pile up some wins, man. We got to get to that fifty mark, man. Let's, <laughs> let's keep it going. All right. So with that being said, fam, y'all hit the like button, man. If y'all not subscribers, please feel free to smash the subscribe button as well, and uh, do us a service and share the show's links on your social media feeds. Help out the stream. Tonight, Pelicans fall short 119 to 112. We'll be back on Thursday to recap that thing, man. And the Pelicans, hopefully, a win against oh, uh, against the Milwaukee Bucks in the Smoothie King Center, man. We got to get this dub. Can't have two, two down, man. We got to get it going. We got to pile up some wins and keep this thing moving. All right, so with that being said, we're going to get out on that. Y'all look check out the, la the latest Flash report. Lex had a really good Flash report. Y'all check that out, share that, and uh, peep that out. Really good one. Uh, about the Pels, man, letting them know what we need to do in this thing for real. So, listen, we're going to holler at y'all on the next one. Much love to the fam, and go Pels. Go Pels. Show us the edge. Yes. The chip on the shoulders, the fight and the passion that comes from within. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. Trying to win on every level. Yeah. <laughs> Expectations high. Got to show them you can fly. Oh, oh, oh. Play harder, better, smarter. Baby, put the league on notice mm -hmm. Show me the edge, yeah. Play with the edge, yeah. Show me the edge, yeah. Play with the edge, yeah. Show me the edge, yeah. Show me the edge, yeah, yeah Whoa, then see the walk of shame enough Wanna see the walk of winning time to come up and bring out the Show the it, it shall be enough. Show me the edge, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Play with the edge, yeah, yeah. Show me the edge, yeah. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans.
the who that daily dot com. That's right, the who that daily dot com. Your one stop mm. shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelicans, LSU Tigers, mm. even the top flight boxing. Room. So if you're a who that and you're looking for a place to stay mm. up on your team, the who that daily dot com is your site. The who that daily dot com for the sport who that in all of us. Right, the Pro Shop is the platform store where you can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Available at the Pro Shops, we have dozens of hundreds of products available for you and your family. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding, face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other items. Please feel free to check out the Pro Shops. The link is in the description section below. And remember, it helps the platform continue to grow. Check out the Pro Shop and who that.